this cool 3D parallax hover effect can be achieved with pure React and Tailwind. It creates an illusion that different components and layers have depth and it seems that they are detached from the background. We will create a reusable and very maintainable component for it to use it in our whole project wherever that we want. So let's get started. To follow along, just make sure that you at least have Node version 18 installed. Here I'm using version 22. Then clone this project here. You can find all the repositories and GitHub Gs in the description down below. And I want the project to be cloned in current directory. So I'm going to put a dot here. Hit enter. Now install all of the node packages like this. Perfect. Now run the project using npm run dev command here. Perfect. Now the project is running on port 5173. Now if you head over to the local host port 5173, you will see the project is running with a simple card which has the properties of a modern shoe. The problem here is that if you hover over it, it does not have the 3D effect that we want. So we need to implement it. But before we continue, hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe. The clone project is a very simple React project created with Vite and with pre-configured Tailwind CSS and a few utility files, some ESLint rules and a very simple pure tier config file which sorts the class names of Tailwind classes and you need to have ESLint and pre-tier installed on your ID, which is optional for this tutorial. Now open the 3D parallax.tsx file. Let me just close the explorer and make it a little bit bigger for you to see better. We have three components here, card container, card body, and also a card item component, which are responsible to organize the component and making it reusable and maintainable. So I decided to divide this component into three different components. For now, they are here as a skeleton and we need to add the 3D hover effect functionality to these components here, these three components. For the first step, we need to keep track of the user's mouse position and use it inside other components or in other words we need to keep track of whether the user's mouse is on the card itself or is not and also because we have three components here and we want to use that shared state between all of them it's very reasonable to create a context for it using react context apis so first of all we need to initialize our context here and we are going to call it mouse enter context let's just import the create context from react it's safe perfect and to use it we need to create a hook like this to consume this provided context here and don't forget to import the use context from react also also with creating custom hooks for our context we are always sure that we are consuming our context correctly. There is nothing so special about this context here. It's just a very simple Boolean state and also its setter function that we are going to use throughout our three components here, the card container, card body, and also the card item itself. Now to use this created context here, we need to wrap the children inside the card container here inside the mouse enter context. So to do that, we need to wrap the return section of our card container inside our mouse enter context dot provider like this and wrap everything inside this provider here and hit save and also so for the value for it, I just need to provide it with the boolean state that is needed here. So to do that exactly above this return section here, I'm going to create a very simple React user state like this is mouse entered and also its setter is mouse entered is equal to use use a state the initial value of false because at the start of our application the user's mouse is not on the card itself and let's import it from react and inside this array here the value array here for the first item just pass the is mouse entered and for the second one set is mouse entered like this and hit save perfect after that we need to add a container ref to the child div here to control the components using the mouse events handlers so first of all, I need to 
initialize my ref here, import user from React. And after that, I need to attach it to the inner div of my card container like this. So the ref of this div is equal to the container ref that we chose initialize. Also, I'm going to add three mouse event handler functions for when the user enters his mouse, when he moves his mouse over the card, and also when he leaves or in other words, his mouse leaves the card component. Also, we need to define these handler functions inside our component. For the first mouse event handler, I'm gonna paste this code here. It's a very simple function. It just sets the mouse state on our mouse enter context to true. And also if the container ref is not initialized yet, it also will return early from our components here. Now for our second mouse event handler, which is handle mouse move, which is a little bit more trickier. First of all, we are going to check our container ref existence. After that, we are getting the CSS properties left of its and height of our component. Then from our event event here, which is a mouse event, we are getting the X position and the Y position of our mouse or user's mouse coordinates on our screen. And with these values, we are going to calculate a simple X and Y value with these two formulas here. And then we are going to reflect this X and this Y here into this div here, which is the inner div of our card container here. And more accurately on its side property by setting the rotate Y and rotate X CSS properties exactly to the calculated X and Y values before. So when the user hovers over the card component itself, it's gonna reflect the user's mouse position on the card component and you're gonna see it at the end of this tutorial. Now for the last mouse event handler, I'm gonna just paste the handle mouse leaf here, which is exactly the opposite of our handle mouse enter. The issue that I encountered now is that we just need to swap these two lines here together. And for our handle mouse leaf handler here, first of all, we are checking the existence of the container ref. After that, when the user leaves the card component, it's gonna set the context into false and also return the card rotation into its initial state, which is zero and zero. Then we add perspective property to the style property of container using inline style because currently Tailwind does not have perspective utility by default. We need to add this style to add depth and 3D like filling to the different layers of our card. Then by adding transform style to the child div like this, we can specify the children to be rendered in 3D space, not latent on its container. The Tailwind also does not support this CSS property by default. If you want to use Tailwind for this case, we need to install some third party libraries, but in this case, using inline style or CSS is sufficient. Also, we add some class names here to add a smooth animations while switching between different states of our component. One for transitional with the duration of 200 milliseconds with the easing of is linear. Now let's head over to the next component called card body here. And for the class name of this card body component, I'm gonna merge this passing class name with the utility that I just created earlier called CN, which is responsible to merge the current class names of components with the one that we are passing them as new class names using Tailwind Merge, which is an amazing third party library that is very common nowadays. So for the first argument of this CN function, I'm gonna pass this a string or in other words, class names here. This class names here are here to make this div itself and all of its direct children, the direct ch children here, to be rendered in a 3D world. So we are using this CSS selector like this to apply this class name here exactly to the direct children that we pass from our parent component to this card body to make all the layers be rendered in 3D space. Now for the most important component of the process here called card item here, first we need to specify a property called translate z to specify the amount of depth that we want to add to each card items that we need which by default it has zero value. Let's add a comma here and also 
the type of it translate z might be number or a simple string like this it's safe perfect for now after that we initialize a simple ref like this with the type of html div element also we need to add this ref to our component here ref is equal to ref and also here we need to add some other smoothing css properties like transition with the duration of 200 milliseconds with the easing of is linear to make everything smooth now by the help of the context that we just created earlier i mean this context here the mouse context this ref here and a simple handler function that we will create it soon we can control the component this component here with the most amount of capabilities first of all we need to get the mouse state from the use mouse enter context the handler function that i was talking about is this simple handler function first of all it will check for the existence of our reference which is the ref here and after that based on the state of our mouse state it will try to apply this translate z property to the style of our card item like this and if the mouse enter is false it will return the component state to the first initialized value also this rotate z here is not necessary let's remove it also we need to call this function on every render of our component so because of that we need to use the use a fake hook of react like this then try to import it from react and then here just start to call the handle animations like this but i made a mistake the return statement and the use effect of my card item is outside of the card item itself so let me just cut and paste it here inside the component perfect now to make the eslint happy just add handle animations in the dependency array and also we have another ESLint warning here that it says that we must wrap our handle animations function inside a simple use callback hook. To do that, just exactly before these two parentheses here, just try to import the use callback from React like this and wrap all of it with it like this. And also don't forget to pass the dependency array and pass the is mouse enter by our context and also the translate z itself that might change. Now that was for it for the entire 3D parallax component like this. These were for our context. Let me just make it a little bit smaller for you to see all of them at once. This was our card container component this was our card id component and also the last one is also our card item component itself now using it is very simple just head over to the app.tsx component let me just close the explorer here and here before the tutorial i have preferred an example but without the translate z property that now we can add to all of our card items wherever we want to use it so it's your preference what values to use here for example for the first card item which is our image which is our image here for example i'm gonna make it a little bit more detached from the background with the translate z property of 200 for the product title, I'm gonna pass the value of translate z of 200 also. No, not just let me revert it back to 100. For the next one, which is the description, I'm gonna use translate z of 50. And also for the price itself, I'm gonna use the translate z of 50 or any other value that you prefer. Now, if you head over to our browser, on our running project, we see that everything is working and wherever the translate Z property has greater value, for example, our shoe image here, whenever it has bigger value, it feel more detached from the background like this. As you can see, you can feel that this image here is closer to you than other parts of the card itself. And now you can reuse this component wherever that you want in your whole application. Just don't forget to put card item and card body inside the card container to have access to the context of the parent. Otherwise, you will get an exception. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.